All right, so I wasn't able to find any existing documentation showing how to record multiple versions of yourself doing one performance at once because I want to do like a one man band kind of thing. So, uh, just to start off with, basically, I am using the uh, Ghost Looper. Uh, this guy here, just type in ghost and it'll come right up. It's a ghost looper, grab it, boom, there it is. Um, so I have an empty one here that has nothing recorded yet. Uh, I'm just going to show what it currently does, the way I have it wired up. The music is terrible, but this is just a demonstration of how it works. So, now that you see basically what the goal to achieve is, I'm going to try to show uh, a demonstration of adding another layer to it. So, first off, I just spawn in a button. Um, if you just go button, there are a couple different types, but this one works well. It outputs the values that are useful for what we're trying to do. And then, basically, I arm that so it's ready to go. And I just remember the part. Then I'm going to try to hit these both at the same time. So, boop. So, after doing that, I'm going to, in order to make sure it doesn't keep looping on you, um, you need to spawn in one of these guys. Um, I believe they're just called value. Uh, let's see. So, value. Yeah. I want it set to zero, and I'm going to loop from... Loop from ghost loop ended, boop, and pause on off. So basically, hold on. there we go, boop. So now that it's like that, when it uh, when the loop ends, it's gonna, I'm assuming, send a signal through here. This is gonna turn that signal into a zero, so it's gonna tell this to turn off after it notices the loop is ended. So then I'm gonna take the thing from this button and plug it into the main on off trigger uh, to trigger playback. So now when I hit this button, it's gonna, now we have four ghosts. One playing this part and one playing all the rest of the parts. Once again, just reiterating, the music is shit. Um, really, uh, for drums, this is just a demonstration to show someone live playing drums by hitting bubbles. 
Uh, really, I would strongly recommend using a sequencer instead. And the actual song I'm working on, that is what I'm doing, is I'm just using a sequencer instead of trying to actually tap out the drums with controllers. Um, it just makes it a lot easier. Um, now, for the vocals, what I really wanted to do was be able to actually sing live because the mic does cool things when you sing like live into it. But um, I did not get good results doing that. And I wasn't able to do uh, post-processing effects on it because um, I really wanted to do reverb. Uh, in the future, I might want to do um, like recreate chorus or delay effects, um, but like lim layering it and then uh, messing with the phase, uh, things like that. So in order to be able to do effects on the vocals that are playing back along with the ghosts, I'm doing a little bit of sleight of hand where essentially um, I took my start button here, see if I can grab it without triggering the button, and then I plugged this in here. So this is the uh, button that once it receives a jolt from the start button, same start button that is triggering all the other ghosts at the exact same time. Uh, it's going to start recording a bubble here. Um, let me, just for demonstration purposes, is that an ad? Yeah. And copy, duplicate. So we are going to dupe, dupe, and dupe. Um, so these are bubble player backs. Uh, I'll go into that in a second. But anyway, so when you push this button, it's going to sync a bubble that's recording from this mic with this reverb. Um, there's also a volume control uh, if you want it. Um, so just as an example, let's see here. Oh yeah, and then I do recommend wiring in a stop stop recording button. Uh, nothing special about this button, just literally from button to stop playback. Um, so I'm just going to do some random noises here. So I hit the stop button there. Honestly, couldn't tell you why this button just teleported over there, but uh, everything appears to work. Um, so after doing all of that, um, it just created a bubble that has what we just recorded in it. Um, so we're going to get rid of you. Uh, no, cut. And pop you in there. Now the main annoying thing is latency so let's see here gotta get a wire from this guy because of how this ended up working i think that button just lives over there now um anyway so i have wired in or i've created a bubble player it's got the waveform that i just recorded from the bubble recorder over there um since i don't want to record anymore i'm just going to unplug that and then the tricky part is you can grab up here and you got to move it just a little bit to drop the start time so that um, it lines up with the rest of your recording because there's going to be like some milliseconds of latency that will make it not line up quite right. So it's going to require just a little trial and error. Let's see.
There we go. Okay. So yeah. Um. So basically, it just showed how you make a recording. Um, then the person singing over here um, is basically just some sleight of hand. Uh, there's no actual audio being recorded. I basically am just dancing and acting as if I'm singing in front of the microphone, um, just looping another avatar. So unfortunately, um, it doesn't actually have any bearing on the vocals recorded. I just mimicked a singing performance on top of all the other ones. So that is how the avatar that's over here, this guy, this guy isn't singing shit. He's just pretending he is. And these three bubbles that were manually So yeah, that is basically how I am currently going about um, doing a layered performance simultaneously. I'll share um, an actual like song where I'm trying harder. Um, like I said, this was literally just a proof of concept. Um, and then once you're done, let's see. There's this little guy. I still need to experiment with it. But ideally, you would use it to, um, let's see, to make everything turn invisible, essentially, uh, once it is playback time. I don't know. Let me see what happens. No. Hmm. So I'll have to experiment with that to show how to actually hide it. Um, if anything, you could maybe hide all the buttons under the ground, um, hide all the wires that way, like set visible, um, you know, like set to hide or whatever. And then when they're in play mode, they won't be able to see it. Um, but that is the most I know right now. I'm still learning quite a bit about this. So it's still going to look like a mess, but if you want to be a one-man band playing with yourself, you can now do exactly that. So hopefully this is helpful to somebody, and yeah, uh, hop on the Discord and ask questions there if you have any further questions. Yeah.